Hello and welcome back to the next video in our series. Today we'll be discussing diffraction. Diffraction is the spreading of a wave around an obstacle in the same medium. The key is that we have a barrier with some kind of opening in it and the wave will in fact go through the opening. But what happens on the other side is quite surprising. The first thing we're going to do is start by looking at a simulation. So here we are back at the wave tank simulation. I'm going to start the waves and you're going to see that this barrier that has a hole in it will change the shape of the wave on one side into a different wave on the other side. The key for diffraction is that the size of the opening must be on the order of length of the wave being diffracted. This opening will be about the size of the wavelength. And you're going to see something very interesting when it comes through. So here it is, the waves have arrived at the boundary. Only this opening right here can let any of the wave through. What do you think is going to happen? Let's see. Look at that. These plane waves come through the barrier and they create circular ripples on the other side. This is diffraction. And if there is one picture you must know for the regions is this picture. The waves coming in on one side, which are plane waves or parallel crests and troughs, come out as circular waves of the same wavelength on the other side. Let's take a look at a diagram. This is the standard diagram from the regions and this is a 3D model of that diagram. The waves come in and they hit the barrier and they come out as circles on the other side with the same wavelength. The distance from crest to crest to crest is the same crest to crest to crest but in a circular fashion. And this is the picture of the diagram you would most often see on a regions. Here's another example of one right here. All right, here's an example of a diffraction type of question. Question number 12, the diagram below shows a series of straight wave fronts produced in a shallow tank of water approaching a small opening in the barrier. And here they are, they're 1.4 centimeter wavelength. Of course, I drew these red circles because you must always remember that the plane wave comes out through the hole as a circular wave. And the question asks, what diagram represents the appearance of the wave fronts after passing through the opening and this is the standard answer with the half circles. Now the most important part of this is to recall that the wavelength of 1.4 centimeters when they're parallel to each other must be maintained as the wavelength of 1.4 centimeters when they are circular. So this is a diffraction problem and we see that diagram 1 shows the diffraction or the spreading of a wave with the same wavelength after it passes through a narrow opening. All right, let's take a look at another one. Here in question 23, a wave passes through an opening in a barrier. The amount of diffraction experienced by the wave depends on the size of the opening and the wave's wavelength. And again, they don't give you this diagram, but we drew it here to remind you. Here's the barrier. There's the opening. Here are the plane waves with parallel wave fronts coming in, but when they hit the opening, they squeeze through and you have curved waves and the distance between one wave crest to the next is the same lambda on both sides. Let's take a look at question 31. The diagram below shows a series of wave fronts approaching and opening in a barrier. Point P is located on the opposite side of the barrier. The wave fronts reach point P as a result of diffraction. So I included in this drawing some very interesting information. So they gave you these black lines which were the wave fronts which are a distance of lambda apart. They gave you these two barriers and an opening. I filled in the dotted lines here which are the troughs because these black lines are the crests. So crest, trough, crest, trough, crest, trough, crest. And here's the opening, and when it passes through, you can see I filled in the circle, or the half circle, and the distance between these wavelengths are the same as the ones on the other side. Lambda on the approaching side, or the incident wave, is the same as lambda in the diffracted wave. All right, let's take a look at another example. Here in question 44, which diagram best represents the shape and direction of a series of wave fronts after they have passed through a small opening in the barrier? By now, you should immediately recognize choice 4 as the standard answer. This is always the picture of diffraction. 
parallel wave fronts hit the barrier that has an opening in it, the water passes or the wave passes through the opening, creating circular waves on the other side, and the waves spread out in circles of the same wavelength as it was in the incident wave. It's that simple. Let's just take a peek at why these other answers are wrong. So we know that you have to have parallel waves coming in and circles going out. And of course, choice one, you have parallel waves going in, but no circles going out. Choice three is wrong because you have parallel waves coming in. And even though you have circles on the other side, the arrows are pointing into the opening. And that, of course, is wrong. Choice two is wrong because you have parallel waves coming in, but the circles that are going out are in the wrong direction. All right, that concludes our discussion of diffraction, a very simple concept. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.